Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. People have been asking me to do this for a while, and I'm like, this book just came out, you guys. We'll that do being, it. That How being said, we're doing it. do it for a while if it just came out? Because it just finished. It's be, uh, As the book was coming out, people were like, oh, I can't wait for this to be on Back Issues. <laughs> I'm like, just read it, enjoy it, it's great. It's what if Spider-Man Spider's Shadow. Uh, uh, that doesn't say what if on uh, the front. It does indeed. <gasps> Oh, gotcha, motherfucker. What? They have yeah. a label They have now? a new imprint for yeah. What If? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah? Because, you know, it's Marvel. Marvel hates imprints. I don't know what their problem is. And when I say hates, I mean they do them and then they just abandon them like a red headed stepchild. <laughs> they just, just okay, whoo, and just there they go. And, and, and with, with just no nostalgia for it. I created all. a department. We now have money set aside for it. Yep. Uh, for one book yeah. that is over now. <laughs> right. And now the offices are empty and defunct. Yeah, moving on. It's like Ghost Core at Sony. <laughs> <laughs> they created an entire arm after, like when they were making that 2016 Ghostbusters movie. Mm -hmm. Like an entire company called Ghost Core that was gonna handle the Ghostbusters cinematic universe. Oh, and we then, have all these plans. We got all these plans and they're fucking bombs and they're like, Okay, never mind. All right. Well. And then when the new one, Afterlife, came out, I remember seeing the Ghost Core logo. I'm like, oh, really? I guess because you have it. It's like, yeah. well, we made the logo. Here's right. the thing: the All the name codes of are the in the business system. <laughs> still yeah. exists. Yeah, we still yeah. did make it. I, I mean, can put it on there, even right. if yeah. no one put any work into it because that yeah. team doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. Look, I, got, I got a budget line right here. There's a number assigned to it and everything. There's zero dollars in it. Let me just change that. Yep. To mm. however much after twenty million. Cost. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now it there's was a way department. More than unfortunately, twenty million dollars. <laughs> well, I mean, for the like oh, for additional the promos stuff. and everything. Yeah, goes like the day to day, the coffee, the paper. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, the administrative, uh, the overhead. Exactly. Yeah. But Chip Zdarsky, of course, has famously worked at Marvel and has been like, I like labels, I like imprints, and there's we're just getting hammered by DC in the aftermarket, in the book market, the graphic novel market. Mm. DC's great at labels and abandoning them, but <laughs> they, they're better at curating them. Mm. Marvel's just like, I have no friggin' nostalgia for any of it. Fuck you. But uh, Well, Zdarsky's how do I have all one connected universe if I keep creating things that don't exist in I it? mean, that's true, but like, mm. they managed to work out just fine for 70 years. <laughs> Zdarsky's like, okay, so he did Life Story. Uh, Spider-Man Life Story, which was like a self-contained original thing. And that was like an idea that he had where it was like, here is a definitive Spider-Man story you can just find on the shelf, boom. Anybody, casual reader, picks it up, they can just get into it, no problem. You're welcome, now take it away. And they were like, okay, Fantastic Four Life Story. Thud, never mind. And they actually approached him for What If. They were like, hey, can you like revitalize What If? And he's like, yeah, I can revitalize What If, what, no problem. This will actually help because I've been saying at every friggin' meeting, yo, we gotta start fixing our label game. And then he designed the What If logo, the new What If logo. Okay. Which is cool, I don't care for the dots. I just don't care for the question, the question, question mark. mark. The like the question mark is question what mark. is what puts it all together. I, I think it's okay. I think he could have he could have used another pass. This is of course a accomplished <laughs> professional who is a graphic designer to my trade. Right. And I'm being like, oh, he could have used another pass. Uh, that being said, no one's done another what if since this book, unfortunately. But what does it, it have to have like a graphic? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well if it's first a, of all, he's design oriented. He's a graphic designer. And also, it's like, it's a good label. You know, you're making yeah. an imprint, you gotta have a good label. You gotta Elseworld do had a label. Vertigo had a label. Labels are important for brand recognition. You know what a label yeah. is? What if? That's what it says. Well, yeah, but but if I'm gonna come up with like a font and everything, I might as well put a little, little, little curly thing cue, boom. There. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Graphically, I'm already doing the work. I'm just doing a little question, bit more. It's all about the question, but it's also, it's, it's like a sentence. So, he, uh, he he cultivates this, and his whole approach was, what if kind of, like, he actually really enjoyed what if, and one of his favorites was, uh, what if. What if we brought what if back? Yeah, right. <laughs> what if Uncle Ben had not died, which is a volume one story, and then revitalized like 17 volumes later or whatever. But yeah. like, he remembers that one vividly, and he has a couple of favorite what ifs, but what if is kind of like a problem, because it's always like one issue, and they gotta like recap most of the thing they're what ifing, yeah, yes. you gotta so catch people up. By the time you get to the change, you only have like three pages left to tell any kind of story, so it's never narrative satisfying. Right, so and he, you have to tell like a complete arc yeah, within uh, one issue. Within one issue. Which you would normally use multiple issues exactly. for. Exactly, so yeah. Zdarsky's like- it's a double length issue, you still yeah, are running enough. out of room. Yeah, because yeah. you gotta you gotta catch up the reader. But now that Marvel doesn't care about that, uh, and Zdarsky's happy to do this, he created this mini series, where like, what if the approach is gonna be 
And the conceit is just basically dictated mm. by Zdarsky, much like how the presidency was dictated by George Washington. It wasn't on paper, nobody told him to do this. It was right. just like, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. It's gonna be a mini series, it's gonna have this graphic on it, and it's gonna take this like premise, and it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna go in another direction. It doesn't have to be inherently like miserable, like Tales from the Dark <laughs> Multiverse or anything. Right. It's, just, it's just, what if this? Right. And we're just gonna follow it for multiple issues. Exactly. That and makes and a it gives lot of you sense. the breath to do what you want. And and it has talent on it, as opposed to just being okay. like, well, are you an intern or are you like an up and up and, up and comer? We're gonna test your skills and give you a what if book. Right. Like no, we'll give you this thing that doesn't matter. Exactly, but like, this like, matters a little bit because there's multiple issues. And it elevates it because then it's good, you know it's got some prestige behind it. Zdarsky, mm. he's like a hot writer that people want to read in continuity. Here's right. the out of continuity Spider-Man story. I'll check that out. Plus, he's already made his bones by doing that other one that he did. But these are both labels that he streamlined and created from the ground up that were then later abandoned, unfortunately. All within the span of about a year and a half. This seems to me like coordinated because yeah. they did the what if show. That's the idea. And now they're doing like a much expanded what if. They told him to I would that. say no, like, they were like, there's a what if show, make a what if book. Right, okay, so that's like, this maybe, a, maybe this is gonna, maybe this has some legs. It, it should, but right now there's only one what if and there are two life stories. So well, you know, it just started, right? Yeah, about a year ago. Yeah, about a year ago. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? When did life story start? Two years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It flopped. And yeah. Like, Let's Are not they do still? Do, is it dead officially? Is it? Nothing's dead officially. Okay. And you never cancel anything officially. Right. Like, like when you, you can always a, go back to it. That's true. But they never do. Well, it's maybe, more like we have an ongoing series. Ah, oh, we have a twelve-issue miniseries. Oh, we have an eleven-issue miniseries. <laughs> an eleven-issue miniseries, Marvel. Yeah, eleven. We, it happens all the time, man. That's true. It's that's not true. exact science. No. Apparently. No, but I can set my watch to Marvel abandoning <laughs> ship at every turn. <laughs> that's the thing I can predict. Well, because they always have. They never not. They never <laughs> don't. Right? It's like the same cap. Although, Ultimate Universe, that went pretty far, That went right? pretty far. did that a that long went, time. That went unexpectedly far yeah. in hindsight. But now Marvel has this really, like, fuck the Ultimate Universe attitude. Like, well, Donny Cates like, loves the Ultimate Universe, and he keeps wanting to bring it back, and Marvel keeps going like, ah! No, we're there's, done. There's literally a page in, an, in a book that, like, virtually nobody's reading that miraculously was still continuing up until the taping of this episode called Strange Academy, where, uh, you know, it's like Hogwarts, but it's Doctor Strange. And, you know, these little kids, and there's like a, there's like a list of timelines slash realities that they're not allowed to visit. And like Amalgam's one of them, <laughs> and 2099 is one of them, and one of them is the Ultimate Universe. And it says huh. underneath it, is this even still a thing anymore? And I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, damn. Like, I get Bendis doesn't work there anymore, but like, yeah. do you have to like take a shit on it too? Like, you know the whole movie universe is predicated on the ultimate universe, right? Is that just some kind of like, ant like some kind of re reactive, like, yeah, I know, yes, I do know that. Yeah. And Fuck that. No, I think it's just like, yeah, we got what we needed out of it, and now it's gone. And <laughs> no, like it's a cheap hua. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah, so we mined it for resources, yeah. you know, creative no, we, we went storytelling out of, we, we resources. Took, we went out a couple of dinners, you were seen, yeah. I got what I wanted, and now you're in the gutter again. Yeah, those books go. are still there, you can go read them you if you want. Uh, except not Marvel's really though. bad at like reprinting, so like once those books are sold, like, you know, good luck. Well, you gotta hunt. Yeah. yeah, I'm making it an, an experience. Yeah, it's like fun. <laughs> it's like no, it's not. You're go just out cheap. in the world. <laughs> go out. Go, go Meet to cons. People. Find, yeah. find these books. I They're made little there. treasure hunts for yeah, you. Thanks, Marvel. Yeah, I don't buy that for a second. Not even a little. So what is the what if uh, behind this? Because it's not called what it, if. It's blah, not. So no, I don't, what I don't if know what the, to think. It's like Elseworlds, where it's like Elseworlds, uh, speeding bullets. Right. What yeah. Is, what does that it's mean? It's a different thing. We're doing a different different thing. What if? We're really aping off DC, but like good. If you want to sell this on YouTube, you call it like, what if Spider-Man became Venom or something? And then, right. you know, so it, he technically does kind of become Venom. I mean, that's, Venom. that's what it says on the back cover. What if Peter Parker became Venom? <laughs> Thanks for the title idea. So, <laughs> oh, that's the name of the show that's now. That's exactly right. <laughs> Thanks, Chip. Right? So, uh, but he also like circumvents a lot of like, reveals that aren't yet revealed yet. You know, like, who's the Hobgoblin? Th that that was kind of a mystery during, the, during that alien costume saga. Right. And so, he knows who the Hobgoblin really, really is, as opposed to who they find out the Hobgoblin is in the 80s. So we get to cut through that bullshit too, okay. you know? But in any case, you know, he's doing his thing, he's being Spider-Man, and uh, he's not getting very good sleep because of course this, this costume is using him as like a, a car. Yeah. <sighs> 
And uh, and he's yeah. having these horrible dreams, which is actually really in keeping with Peter Parker. He has really like thematically relevant to the story. He's in dreams, right. and those dreams are of like death and horror and everything. Yeah, like he's that. in a lot of skulls. Yeah, a lot of and skulls. Flames. Yeah, a lot of flames and skulls. Flames and skulls. It's weird. I don't know what the flames. You know, it's oh, funny. The, the, well, he was just in space. You think maybe some of his dreams would be about space yeah. crap? Yeah, I get. Well, he's a nerd. He should be thinking about. Well, yeah, that. or the Secret Wars stuff. He should be having like nightmares. Yeah, he about, should have PTSD about from all having the been, super villains and stuff. Right, that'd be kind of neat. Up. Instead, it's just it, it's relegated to this story. It's all right. self-contained. Like, nah, I'm not pulling in all that garbage. Come on. The only thing I'm pulling in is the black suit. Yeah. Well, and all the continuity that Peter Parker <laughs> yeah. has been yeah, in. Yeah, Peter far. Parker stuff. Yes. Not 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 what, crossover. Like, although it stuff. does kind of we, we get a little like mini Secret Wars reunion at the end. Oh uh, yeah. But okay. like but death and fire are actually two powerful images that are in this book and pervasive throughout. So it makes sense that Peter is dreaming about them. Okay. He wants to be Ghost Rider. <laughs> I mean, you see death and fire, skulls and fire, Ghost Rider. He does not become Ghost Rider, although there are some fun what-ifs where that happens. So His webs would be on flames. Oh, flaming webs. Yeah. Yes. There's a uh, story where, in another reality, Doc Ock, superior Spider-Man's Ghost Rider. So Doc Ock is in Ghost Rider's body and the chains are his arms. You know, he's like suspended by flaming chains okay. that are like the octopus arms. Yeah, he's like, this is the only way I know how to move anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Have they ever done flaming webs before? I don't think I've ever you seen. You could just use flaming webs. Like yeah. you could just put a little like lighter on the end of it and just make them from like a flammable. I mean, material. he has taser webs and stuff. So yeah, you could imagine that. I mean, I want to see fire webs. I've seen Ghost Rider Spider Man, and there's a skin for that in the video game, <laughs> and it happened in an alternate reality comic book. But it's only like two pages, so I don't know why they picked that one. Uh. But probably because he looks friggin' crazy looking. <laughs> yeah. But well, yeah. uh, I have never seen flame webs. Well. See, the funny thing is, Marvel. is that those Get on are both hey, flame webs. Those are both his chains yeah. and his mode of tra transportation. Yes. Unless he gets in the spider buggy. Right. <laughs> Which now we need to see fan art of. <laughs> so, uh,. You know, Spider-Man saves this old lady. He goes home, he's having bad dreams. Mary Jane sneaks up on him, which is a bad idea. He backhands her into the wall. Is she staying with him? No, she's just visiting. Oh, okay. Mary Jane does not know boundaries. She just lets herself in. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's in bed. Yeah. Like in his underwear. Yeah, she's but, like breaking into his apartment. But it's like during the day. You know, it's That's like two sexy. or three in the afternoon. Right. It's true, yeah, <laughs> she's true, trying to surprise yeah. him. No, they're, they're, she has rejected him in terms uh. of their relationship. Although she does secretly love him. Okay, but he backhands her across the room and this isn't the like the I'm freaking oh, out No, it, he was asleep. She, yeah. And she doesn't, by the way, this is the moment where I'm like, ah, oh, jeez, here we go. Mm -hmm. But instead, it's just like, she's like, I'm sorry, I know you're Spider-Man, I shouldn't have snuck up on you. And I'm like, look, it's not your fault, Mary Jane, that's not your call, but right. at the same time, I'm glad it's not a pervasive problem. It's more like it's just, it's, it's indicating what's to come. Peter is going to inadvertently hurt the ones he loves because he's Spider-Man. Ah, you know, he's swinging around, he's like, you know what, this costume thing, I, I never got it checked out, and in the comics he does, he goes to Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four, and uh, he's like, I'm gonna go to the Baxter building. He's thinking about it, and as he's heading towards the Baxter building, his webbing fails, and so he kind of like falls. And of course we know it's because the suit knows what he's thinking, and it's like, I'm not taking you to Richards. No. I gotta make We're you We're going think for pizza. Yeah, right. exactly, yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Just swinging him to his favorite pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you could call this- This is like where it diverges. I mean, he doesn't backhand Mary Jane into the wall. That'll happen in the 90s. Right. But in this one, the point of divergence is just like, the symbiote is more aggressive. Right. The symbiote knows that it will be Venom one day, unlike it did in the nine in the in the eighties. Right. But uh, it knows that Peter is going to betray it. Yes. Yeah, it behaves like it should have been the whole time if Venom. If is they had ever like known real. what they were yeah. going to do with that freaking suit. <laughs> yeah. Well, it takes time for the symbiote to really absorb the impressions of Peter. True. Yeah. Or yeah. Whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is another moment of divergence because instead of going to the Baxter Building and getting it off of him, he instead encounters the Hobgoblin. No, he's got to have a Hobgoblin fight. Well, Hobgoblin's a cool villain, fun design. Yeah. He's Looks he dope. was he was pretty much Spider-Man's main antagonist for a period right. in this time. Right. So it's like it would actually be kind of irresponsible to not do Hobgoblin. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, here here's and Hobgoblin. So he's there. Right. Okay. Plus, he's a great he, he's a great character in this. So Hobgoblin shows up. He fights Spider-Man, and, and the the way that it always worked in the '80s when Spider-Man fought Hobgoblin is they would fight. Hobgoblin would pull out some kind of tech because he's not crazy. Right. Just a jackass with former Norman Osborn technology. So he's better at it, or at the very least, he's less unhinged. Yeah, like he's not letting the madness take over. Exactly, yeah, he's, he's not like, yes, focused. and now here's the part where I like jerk off over you. <laughs> you know, he's He actually is just like, I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna lose my big score. So he- He should be more effective then. He is a little more effective. Well, he's certainly, uh. you see, that's the thing is, Green Goblin's more effective at murdering Peter Parker's loved ones mm. because he's crazy. Hot Hot Goblin is a better he's criminal. He's a better maybe. criminal. Yeah, yes, okay. he makes more money. Are you kidding me? <laughs> if I had a glider and pumpkin bombs? I'd sell them 
to the military immediately. Ben's like, well, I'd rob banks, motherfucker. <laughs> well, then you'd be killed. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> that thing has no walls. You're just exposed. I mean, the pumpkin bombs, admittedly, you know, maybe make it a few. I just kind of figure I would create the it new like, some drone racing sport. Ooh. But like oh. where the person is on the drone themselves. Seriously, no. I, I mean, come on. Can you imagine just like a fleet of goblin gliders? I, you'd have to retool the name. Anyway, so he fights Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin's like, this is the part in the story where I bail. And Spider-Man's like, no. And he webs him to the car and he just grabs his mask and he takes it off. He's like, I'm done. Oh, I'm shit. sick of this bullshit. And it's mostly because I think the idea is, and here's the what if, here's the real what if. What if Peter Parker got less than six hours sleep a night? <laughs> <laughs> He's just, uh, yes, he's just, just forever. Yeah, for yeah. at least a couple of weeks. Like he is delirious. <laughs> like even tired. though I'm sleeping, I'm not. Right, it's like insomnia meets Spider-Man. So he takes off the mask and it's Roderick Kingsley who will be later on revealed in a retcon that it actually was him the whole time. He's like, right. you, are you shitting me? What a huge disappointment. I You're not an Osborne. I was expecting yeah. somebody else. Well, okay. You're not even like one of my friends. No, yeah, exactly. He's like, yeah, of course. That's why I'm good at this. So he goes, it's overview, Kingsley. I know who you are. I'm not even going to call the cops. Tell everybody that I'm coming for them. Like, you're going to be, you're going to spread my legend. <laughs> Tell everybody. What? Yeah. Well, because you have criminal yeah. underworld connections. So, like, oh. yeah, all the villains will know that Spider Man's. When Plan do they not keeps. know right. that he's coming for them? Well, I got to web it on the side of a building. Yeah. I'm playing for Keith <laughs> now. <laughs> Yeah, why does he need Yeah, actually, Kingsley all he needs to, need do, to do is write that in webs, take the picture himself, sell it to the bugle, yeah. and then he's got it disseminated. No, yeah. it's, it's better. And it's, he makes some money off yeah, of it. Yeah, but he's scared the shit out of Kingsley. And he's shown him because we're not going to keep this mystery going until the mid 90s. Right. It's over for you. I'm going to unmask all my villains. Hobgoblin. <laughs> die. Oh, that was his face. Right. I'm, I, I, I degloved his face. <laughs> Which is a term that I hate. Yeah. Deglove? Which is like, yeah, when you lose your skin, I'm like, oh, that needs a much more hardcore term because, <laughs> because deglove could be innocuous, but knowing the subtext behind it, subtext, the yeah, horror behind it. Degloving yeah. could be sexy. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> unless you're a creep. So he goes back to his place and Felicia's waiting for him as the black cat and he's like, hey. And she's like, let's fuck. And he's like, I'm really tired. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll get some sleep. You just have your way, yeah. Because apparently my body's doing its own thing. Exactly, anyway. <laughs> but uh, you know his his mask like moves. It's just a classic move that has been happening in the '80s for a while. Like it was always a move. Right. And this, it's the first time he tries it on her. She's like, "Uh, what's up with that?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, it's my alien tech costume I got from another planet." And she's like, "You should probably have to check it out. <laughs> like you might have like space cooties or something." And he's like. Fair no. enough. So she's like, "Yeah, go on." So he goes to the Baxter building. Now the suit's like, "I, I can't not." Mm. His his will is quite strong. Right. Now. Well, it's like it'll be suspicious. He'll if I like fuck right. up his journey to the yeah. Baxter Building. Oh, now the second I, time. Yeah, he'll think it's me. Yeah. If uh, <laughs> if I refuse him getting laid because he's not checking out the suit. Yeah. He's definitely gonna think something's up. Exactly. So he goes to the Baxter Building. He meets up with the, the Fantastic Four, and they're like, "All right, I'm working on all kinds of shit, but I'll check out your suit too." And so he puts. They should just be busy. Yeah, right? Well, in every story, seemingly in the 90s, every time he calls the Fantastic Four, they're like in another dimension or in space or something. Uh -huh. But like in Just the 80s, the they time. were available because yeah. they were very popular characters. So Spider-Man <laughs> goes to the Baxter building. They're like, yeah, sure, we'll check it out. He jumps into a pod and he's like, hey, listen, can I like sleep in here while you do your test? And he's like, uh, knock yourself out, dude. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's only gonna be like 10 minutes. Right, but like, sure. So they let him sleep and he has like a horror dream. He is huge and there's like people scattered throughout the city. Mm. And he needs like to- Like ants. Uh, right, like ants. They're like ants to him. And speaking of ants, Aunt Speak. May is in peril across the street mm. with all these people in the way, and he mm. needs to step on them to get to Aunt May. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. And the, like, suit is basically telling him subconsciously, like- It's fine, crush it's them. It's fine, you need to get, like, the greater good is saving Aunt May. Like, you, <laughs> well, you're, you're gonna lose a few. You're gonna have to kill these people to save one. Well, like, you can't- like the opposite of Spock. You don't have to kill them, but you don't have to save them. <laughs> from your feet crushing them. <laughs> well, like, your actions are gonna have collateral damage, but it's like, right. it's like Batman to a new level. Yeah. So okay, he, but this is a dream. You're not literally gonna step on them. I mean, symbolically, right. like, they're gonna die. Exactly. Yeah, except yeah, for okay. the fact that when you're in the dream, like, you You're know, literally crushing them. You think that it's real. Yeah. That's true, yes. So is gonna get crushed, and he, like, tries to grab the ceiling from crushing her, and he's not strong enough, and then the suit's like, I'll help you, and it makes him stronger. So, like, oh. it's creating this narrative, like, you're not strong enough without it, need me. and you need me, and, like, this is, yeah, well, and he's the, like, that's right, Peter Parker's not strong enough, but Spider-Man is, and yeah. the suit's like, God 
damn it. No, no, this isn't a self-reflection thing. I'm the thing. So uh, he wakes up from a horrible nightmare, and they're like, oh, hey, dude, what's going on? And uh, Reed's like... You broke like, our pod. <laughs> no, he doesn't, but like Reed's like, eh, the tests were done a while ago, but we let you sleep because yeah, you clearly... It seems like you friggin' needed it. You need it. it. Uh, but it gave us time to actually like, look at the readouts, and it's alive, and it's going to attach itself to you. And he's like... What? And he's like, oh. It's alive, and you left it on me? Well, like... Sleeping this whole time? Well, better there in the tube. Mm. You know, but now that you're conscious, and you can, like, control it seemingly, right. I'll tell you. And he goes, well, I... What if I need it? I need it. And he, they're like, no, you don't, son. Leave. Like, yeah. g- give it to him. And he goes, oh, I get it. I, I get it. Mr. Fantastic of the world famous corporation, the Fantastic Four, needs my alien technology. <laughs> like, wants you to- want it for yourself. Peter Parker! <laughs> Do not take me for some conjurer of cheap science. <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. yeah. So he yeah. leaves, and they're that's like, that's fun. That's probably not him talking. <laughs> right. It was, but like, you know. Right, but he's already been like influenced. Yeah, he's like, been already... seduced by it. Yeah. yeah. So he goes to Aunt May's, and as you probably remember, Aunt May is not talking to Peter because he dropped out of graduate school. Oh, right. Because Zdarsky remembered that, and I'm like, oh, hey, maybe he watches back issues. <laughs> well, not only that, but like, we, that should be some of the more popular ones. Uh, agreed, yeah. Hey, we like, we, like, we're in a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. You know, I help you, you help me. Your name bolsters the show, our show bolsters your name. To who's the black suit? Are you? I think we're the black suit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we leech off of him. <laughs> like the parasite. Yeah. <laughs> he goes to Aunt May's, and of course Aunt May is like, "Oh, you called me on my shit." He doesn't like go like, "Aunt May, it's graduate school. Come on, it's yeah, the geez. '80s. I can get a job anywhere." I already anyway. got a BA. Yeah. Right. Come on, it's BS. It is BS. <laughs> Immediately, you know, he's like, "Hey, Aunt May, I need you," and she's like, "Of course, come in." So yeah. they're talking. She's like, "You seem troubled," and he's got like this five o'clock shadow slash mm. beard coming in. And she's like, like, talk to me. I, I need wheat cakes. <laughs> I, need, I need sustenance. <laughs> Make me the, the largest stack you've got. Remember when Uncle Ben had the flu? I need triple that stack. Oh my God, it's DEFCON 5 in the May Parker household. <laughs> oh, she's whipping up a storm in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Neighborhood kids are coming by. They're stealing seconds. Anyway, so yes. So they're talking. And uh, while, they're, while they're just having tea, they're, you know, she's giving him wisdom. Uh, his spider sense goes off and uh, there's a huge explosion. Oh, thank God it wasn't. Your spider sense is going off because uh, May's a really good influence and she'll talk you out of getting <laughs> separated with yeah, me. And the suit's like, no, she'll override my bullshit. No, the wall explodes and Hobgoblin comes out and he's like, I found out who you were, you piece of shit. I followed you. I followed you here. You you, you broke the code. You broke the bro code, man. <laughs> you took oh, off I my see. mask. You took I was going to say, like, why mask? now? Why does Hobgoblin now decide? But it's because he unmasked him, so he's like, oh. oh. I yeah. guess I just never thought before well, to follow you home because you never crossed that line. Hobgoblin <laughs> says it's because you crossed the line and that's why I did it. Like right. we we were we were doing a dance, man. We had a yeah. relationship and you just broke the you broke the code. Yeah, I didn't so, care who you were. All bets are it's off, a big dude. Deal. Yeah. All right. So sure. They fight and of course like the suit jumps on him and so now he's Spider-Man in front of Aunt May and Aunt May's like addled because like the wall exploded and she's like a thousand yeah. years old. <laughs> Did she know he was Spider-Man? Absolutely fucking no. not. Hey! Yeah. Unless you read Amazing Spider-Man 400, in which case she always knew. So, uh, yeah, but she didn't. There's right. no way. Oh, that's the thing is, is Zdarsky's like, no, 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 this is the 80s when they didn't know that. that when they didn't knew. write that issue yet. Yeah, but they also didn't know that Ben Kingsley was Hobgoblin, but he still no, made no. him Hobgoblin. <laughs> ben Kingsley, Roderick Kingsley. Ro- Ro- whatever. <laughs> One of those fucking Kingsleys. <laughs> no, but they did. Well, the writer of the original Hobgoblin saga knew it was Roderick Kingsley. And so if you follow uh, the breadcrumbs, like, okay. you can find out it is him, but... Then he was fired off the book, and editorial's like, I don't like that. I, yeah, I, change it. Make it Ned. Oh, so it was Ned Leeds. Yeah. Well, like, oh. it, it ended so up this is wrong. It Roderick. It's wrong if you read it during that saga. So just like this is wrong if you read the original story and, the spider, and this, he takes the suit off and right. gets it analyzed. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, wait, wait, he is Roger Kingsley here. Hobgoblin was always Roger Kingsley. Yeah. But in the original continuity, when the books were coming out in the 80s, when they did do the unmasking, it was Ned Leeds. Then oh. they did. Well, but so it was. It changed, but the writer, and it changed back. the writer, always wanted it to be Kingsley. Okay. But then he left the book before the reveal, and so editorial said, "No, make it Ned Leeds." So even though all of the book, the subtext of the book is that it's Kingsley. Right. The the in continuity, it was Ned. But then they brought the original writer back oh. in the '90s and wrote a retcon mini series where they go back to the original breadcrumbs and go, actually, he w- Ned Leeds was set up, and it was always Kingsley. 
I see. Okay. Like it should have been. Right. So, so Kingsley it is, is technically okay. always Hobgoblin. Right. So that but, is correct yes, but, for current continuity, technically. Yes. Yeah. But if you were reading it in the 80s, up until like 1996, Ned Leeds had always been Hobgoblin. Okay. So they're fighting and, you know, Hobgoblin gives a spiel about like, you know, the bro code. And <laughs> Peter's just like, are you fucking shitting me? That's not a thing, dude. You came into my fucking house and you blew up my freaking ants place. I'm going to kill you. you. You think this is putting us on even right. footing? Yeah. No, also, man. you're a criminal. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to be like, oh, you cross the... What? Right. You cross all the lines. Yeah, exactly. But also, like, it's great because... Okay, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, a fire breaks out in Aunt May's house. And so he's pounding on Hobgoblin and the fire gets bigger. Oh. And he's like, oh shit, like Aunt May is going to burn alive in my house. And so he goes to the fire to get in there and save Aunt May, but the suit won't let him because oh. the suit is weak to fire. And it was like, no, like you can't go in there. The suit is selfish and doesn't want to die. Why doesn't he let the suit leave him? Or because he doesn't know the suit. suit is like talking to him. It does oh, talk to him. It says okay. like, no, you can't. I see. So he needs the suit to lead to just get off him for a minute. And yeah, it's like, no. but he'll also burn to death if he takes off the suit because oh. it's, it's a huge fire. He's so just, even if he was Spider-Man just without the black suit, he couldn't save her from this fire? He he would try. It's just, oh. he would. You think he would die though? No, I, given I, this fire? I think he, he, Peter would find a way, but yeah. the suit That's is like saying, a drug. Like, and so yeah. it's like messing up his perception. Okay. Uh, but it is still Yeah, maybe it's like Inferno. making the fire seem bigger than it actually yeah, is. Yeah, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think it is just a big fire. But so Aunt May dies in the fire. Wow. And, what? And and Hobgoblin's like, oh shit, I better get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so he starts getting up, and when the suit goes back on Peter, it creates this kind of face. This like new venom face. Oh, like a skull face, kind of. Yeah, it's got little like, like, like little teeth, like a spider. Right. And so he webs up Hobgoblin, and Hobgoblin's like, you know, you started this, man. Like, it's, you can't blame me for what I happened. I started it? What? So... Uh, I didn't make you the friggin' well, Hobgoblin. I didn't put that costume wall. on you. Who set my yeah, ass house on my fire? Ma- you took my mask off, man. Yeah, you attacked me like a thousand times. You showed the you showed the cheerleading squad my dick, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, no. So it's, Ugh, he says it so that Peter could say, "But I'm gonna finish it." And uh, so he he webs him up, and he webs him up like he is a fly. Right. Like he's, like, gonna, he's completely like he's gonna wrapped suck up. his juices, but yeah. he doesn't. He just he just grabs his face with his hands and digs his thumbs into his eye sockets oh. and murders him, and then leaves him suspended in webbing in front of so Aunt May's would know burning it was house. Spider Man. Yes. Well, that does send a message to the criminal community. Yeah. yeah. But as you can see, like this thematically mirrors the Ben Parker death because. Peter lets a criminal go because he's selfish. In this, Peter lets Hobgoblin go because he's selfish. And How is that selfish? Because he's like, I want to, because I want to scare these criminals yeah, into not bothering police. me anymore. Yeah, he wanted to send a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he like, should have called another the cops, Parker died. And then they would have been arrested. If he'd done and the right thing. Happened. His yeah. aunt wouldn't be dead. Yeah. Just like if he'd done the right thing the first time, Uncle Ben wouldn't okay. be dead. Okay. It's like, hey, you fucking write stories. But yeah. but the right thing is not. Not unmasking Hobgoblin. No, that it's was calling. No, that was a different but he thing. Did, you know, but the thing is, like, it is a divergence from the norm. Like, you didn't unmask him in the original story, and in this you did, and that's wrong. Like, you shouldn't have crossed that line because you you made this dangerous person more desperate. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you had just played the game, except like collateral damage takes place with superhero fights yeah. anyway. Oh, but also, if you'd called the police, they would have unmasked him. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, like, that's so if thing. he did the right thing, the same thing would yeah. happen. Yeah, if he had just like to to Hobgoblin, right? Yeah. So. So I feel like the unmasking is not really no, the problem. Here. The it's, problem it's, is that he didn't. It's, he the, didn't, it's that he let him go. He let him go. Yeah. And yeah, he had a personal him. game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So go spread my legend. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sure he's gonna fucking <laughs> no, do that. I'm just gonna get another you mask and some idiot. more pumpkin bombs. Yeah. And I'm gonna blow up your fucking house. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, now he's dead. from you, you asshole. <laughs> Thanks for letting me go, dipshit. <laughs> exactly. I, lo- I love that Hobgoblin trying to get away and be like, hey man, you started this, don't blame me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, 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 you can't just sack me back. <laughs> Base. So Peter has this like waking dream where he like, he meets the suit and the suit's like, Aunt May died because like we weren't strong enough. Right, because we didn't murder Hobgoblin we didn't, sooner. We, we killed Hobgoblin. Uh, 
Uh, Aunt May would still be alive. I wanted to save Aunt May. Yeah. You wouldn't let me go back in the house. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Oh, no, no, this is a life. dream. Yeah, I, I get control life for that yeah, fucking yeah. fire. Yeah, I, I, I have control over your subconscious. This so is my worry. narrative. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's, it's, and, the, and of course, the suit represents selfishness anyway. But sure. yeah, so the, the suit is like, you need us. Like, we need to do this. And so he's like, yeah, okay. So it comes on to him. And now he's, you know, Spider-Man. Like, he, he's keep, pretty much accepted the suit. Does he right. keep the face? Is that face permanent The now? face comes out, like, when he, like, loses it. Like when the suit more or less takes over. Oh, it's like in Buffy the Vampire Slayer when the vampires vamp out, oh, the face gets all wrinkly. Yeah, and like stuff. when Angel uh, yeah. experiences happiness for the first time, and then he just Rah. yeah. Remember? Yeah. yeah. No, the curse is broken. Oh uh, no! Now whatever. I'm a vampire again. Yeah, yeah I only, just mean the transformation yes. from like I can look normal. Oh, so, now I'm oh, like now I'm a bad guy. And you can yeah. tell as a visual cue that says to the viewer like, oh, yeah, I'm about to be bad. So Kingpin is reading about this in the paper because Kingpin clearly is Chip Zdarsky's favorite fucking villain of all time, <laughs> uh, which no argument here. Right, but and Kingpin uh, just is, killed Hobgoblin, so gotta get a new villain in here. He do, right, big time. <laughs> and of course, Hobgoblin was like a competitor for Kingpin. You know, he's like a crime lord. So Kingpin's like reading the paper. And he's like, oh shit. Like uh, number one, that could be me. Number yeah. two, like good for me, but also number three, Spider-Man might be gunning for me. Right. So like, holy shit. Uh, you said Hobgoblin. I'm just backing up a second. Yeah. You said he was a competitor for Kingpin. Did he have like lackeys? Yeah. And, like, yeah, shit? like Hobgoblin had like a syndicate. Oh, shit. Yeah, he like attacked Fisk's interests and stuff. <laughs> Wow. Were they goblin okay. themed? No, they were not. No, they were crime themed. They dressed like regular people so he could actually like do stuff. Oh. He showed up kind of like Vulture in Homecoming where it's like, you guys do your shit. And then when I need to like pick things up with my Vulture talents, I go out as Vulture. Uh, you know, like when you okay. need to bullshit up, Hobgoblin shows up with pumpkin bombs. Right. Okay. That's kind of cool. I think. Yeah. yeah. Jameson is writing all these editorials like, Spider-Man lost his fucking shit. And like this poor woman in Queens died. Yeah. I was right Collateral about Spider-Man the whole fucking time. This guy's yeah. a piece of shit. And he's just, every day, Peter is seeing, like, more and more, even more vitriolic headlines about how Spider-Man sucks. Right. So, Spider-Man just crashes through the wall of the Daily Bugle <laughs> and attacks Jameson. He's like, I am so sick of you! Huh. I'm right! I'm right! I am vindicated! I am so yeah, right! I, yeah, I wish he'd be like, yes! <laughs> Kill me! <laughs> you just made my Do fucking it. day! Do it! Do it! <laughs> Do it. I knew it! My obituary will be your undoing! <laughs> but uh, he, he grabs James and he holds him up against the wall and he smashes his hand. Like he crushes his hand oh. into the wall. Oh, yeah. And breaks his hand, <laughs> showing how serious he is. Yeah, his fingers are all fucked up they in the really wrong are. direction. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, if you fucking don't knock it off, your whole body's gonna look like your hand. You know, oh, jeez. Kind of Poor Robbie Robertson has always been like in Spider Man's corners, like, holy shit, <laughs> this is fucked. And he's like, hey! <laughs> hey, shut up, Robbie. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and give Peter Parker a race! <laughs> <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> So he, he he leaves. Actually, that would be a great time to be like, his aunt just died. He can really use it. <laughs> he can really use the help. <laughs> so he fucking leaves, and like James is just holy crap. That yeah. was it was that was messed up. That was messed up right there, Robbie. <laughs> I'm going to write the most scathing <laughs> article yeah. I have ever written. <laughs> oh shit! I guess Spider-Man's exactly what I always said he was. Yeah. Yeah. I never actually thought he was that. But I was just lying. Like. No, it's it's, it's no. Like, he thought that. It's all kind of but, about but escalation. But if he really thought that, then why? Why is he so surprised? Right. Like, why? <laughs> why doesn't he think like, wait, how come Spider-Man hasn't come and beat the <laughs> shit out of me? Yeah. Well, because he's a coward. Because I'm tree speaking truth to power. Uh -huh. Well, I'm also. I wouldn't be surprised if Jameson wrote articles about other criminals. Yeah. They don't just come to the bugle and blow him, blow up his office. No, that's true. It's true. But, but Spider-Man wears a mask, so he could. He totally could. But He's the one who well, could. Well, sometimes he does break into his office and, like, webs him to a chair or, mm. like, sticks a cigar up his nose. You know, he, he does pranks, like Three Stooges-esque pranks on him. <laughs> but he assaults him. He do oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, unquestionably, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it's all in good fun. Yeah, sure. People, yeah, tell that to the fucking cops. Police don't shoot do what Spider-Man does. Please shoot at me because of your headlines. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, he leaves, and you know Jonah's just like, but that's the thing is that because Peter pushes it because he goes over the line, mm. he, it forces his enemies to to es to escalate it. Right. You know, like if he didn't, that's yeah, like, like what they say about Batman. Yeah. You know, Batman crossed the line. He right? forces the criminal Except, underworld like, to like escalate as well. Right. But Batman's madness is Batman, whereas Spider-Man's madness is this suit that is right. telling him that he's doing oh, the right yeah, thing. Yeah. So uh, Spider-Man is now, after assaulting this newspaper publisher, uh, on, under the radar. He's trying. He's doing his thing. He's killing villains and shit. 
but like all kind of just, he just goes, he's like, blah, and they die. Like, you know, it's just, he's a wraith that's just stalking New York. Right. And Mr. Fantastic like, is like. But villains are disappearing. They are disappearing. Or they're reappearing as corpses. <laughs> and uh, They're being transformed into corpses. <laughs> Mary Jane goes to visit Peter because Peter's kind of like fallen off the grid. So she goes to his right. apartment and it's just in disarray because he just left it. Right. Because he's not thinking about the Peter right. Parker stuff. Symbiotes and, don't need to clean up. That's right. That's right. Or bathe. We or just bathe. eat our garbage. Yeah. So, so he, uh, so, so Mary Jane goes into his bedroom and Peter is sleeping in this like suspended cocoon kind of thing. Yeah, weird. The suit is just like letting, like the, the suit's yeah. like, I know your body needs to recuperate. It's like, like a right. hammock. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. But I love this image because it's just, just so friggin' off. It's yeah. so alien. And she's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, oh, Mary Jane, I didn't, want, I didn't want you to see me like this. She's like, see you like what, man? Holy crap. And he's like, uh, like my aunt's dead. She's like, I know, I read it in the papers. Where the fuck were you? We had a funeral. Somebody had to pay for that. It wasn't you. And you're like, this is messed up, man. Like, I, I, but she's there. She is a sympathetic ear. She, she's the one who loves and understands him. She knows both sides. Black right. Cat doesn't really like Peter Parker. Doesn't want to deal with it. No, she likes Spider-Man. She wants to fuck Spider-Man. You know, that's it. Mary Jane, she gets it. Right. She's just kind of like, hey, listen. And she's just like, what is this? And he's like, oh, no, it's fine. It's cool, actually. It's way better than usual. Yeah. She's like, I'm stronger uh, than ever now. Yeah. And she's like, what the hell? Uh, like, you need to talk. Like, you need somebody to talk to. And he's like, no, I don't. Nah. And he leaves. <laughs> we have someone to talk you to. Know, you don't Basically understand that. my power. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So. He bails, and when he leaves, he's immediately attacked by like some members of uh, his his rogues gallery: Shocker, <laughs> Scorpion. Nice. And because uh, they're like, we got to go on the offensive. This dude's like picking us off. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. <laughs> I think run and fucking hide. Jesus. I mean, these people think they uh, can win. I live in New York. <laughs> I have rent to pay. Yeah. I can't just leave. I'm the Shocker. I have. Where am I, I have gonna pets? go? <laughs> Where am I gonna go? I need this score. So this he, is my home. So he fights them. Uh, You've never been able to beat Spider-Man ever on before, his best day. and now that he's killing people, you think now is the well, time. Well, he teamed up with out. Scorpion. New York strong. <laughs> <laughs> you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Oh my God, that's what the Sinister Six should do. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? You're trying to you, you picking on a poor guy? He's just got some vibro gauntlets. So. Uh, you know, Scorpion fights him and he just shoves the symbiote down his throat and kills Scorpion. Like, oh, shit. It's just a horror show, but he's just- That's awesome. He's just like, it, it, Scorpion is shocker. Like, I could beat you in half an issue when I'm normally Spider-Man, but now, like, you're fucking dead. Right. So, now that I don't mind killing you. Yeah. And I got the suit, it's super easy. Right? Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> so he, he wrecks their day. He like, he, he rips Shocker's arm off. Oh my god. And it turns out that actually, after torturing them, these guys are working for Kingpin. Ah. Kingpin sent them. Okay. But Kingpin sent them like, knowing pretty much they were going to die. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so. He's just like testing him yeah, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So Spider-Man goes to Kingpin and he just throws like pieces of the of Scorpion oh my and, god. and Shocker at Kingpin. I brought you your guys back. Yeah, here's your guys. Or part of them anyway. And Kingpin's unperturbed. You know, yeah. It's like, eh. it's like, oh. I'm reading this very interesting article by J. Jonah Jameson at the moment. <laughs> yes. Right. But he goes, I know it's you. I saw that like you lost it at the death of this woman named Mae Parker. It took no time to find out who you were. Oh. So now I know. And my plan was to systematically destroy everyone you love. Here's the funny part. You have no one. <laughs> you have no family. You have no girlfriend. There's no one I can get revenge on. You are utterly alone. You are, you're, you're just, it, to, to get revenge on you is wasted. Right. You know? So that, like, as he's giving Spider-Man a hard time, Spider-Man just immediately punches him so hard, he's off panel and just blood plasts out where his face used to be. And his teeth come out yeah. and pieces of his face. He, oh my God. He seemingly Ooh. murders Fisk. Yeah, at least one... knocks every tooth out of his head. Yeah. If he's not dead, he's <laughs> gonna be in a coma. Yeah, no. Uh, you're meant to think he's dead, but there's right. a post-credit scene where I he's see. not. But in any case, Fisk That's, is dead. Uh, Fisk is so stupid because he's literally like, so I tried to find leverage over you that would allow me to control you, but it turns out I don't have any. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and you don't have any? I have literally no hand. Well, I guess I nothing. could just kill you then. <laughs> what? In the benefit of hindsight, <laughs> 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 because last time I checked, you're just fat. Right. Like you have no powers. Right. Yeah, I might have been afraid I that you would kill I'm a very influential man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my fists could le literally cave in a jeep. <laughs> Not in the face! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
pull out heart. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so the Sinister Six, uh, you know, convenes. They're like, we gotta, we gotta kill this guy before he kills us because right. he is gonna fuck up our day. Right. So it's Doc Ock, Mysterio, Craven the Hunter, who hasn't killed himself yet. Oh. Electro, Rhino. That's what five. That's, That's five. five. They haven't gotten their their sixth member yet. Okay. Uh, and that member is J. Jonah Jameson. With his new robot he hand. He teams up with the Sinister Five yes, to make them six. That's right. He's, well, he's like, Weird. I, he's like, I would never throw in with you people. You're all criminals and monsters, but Spider-Man's worse. Right. Look what he Why is Spider-Man worse? It's not a robot worse. hand, it's a, it's a cast. How is Spider-Man worse? They kill people all the time. <laughs> you know why he's worse? And they're criminals. I'll, he's at least killing bad guys. I'll, I'll tell you why he's worse. It's the hypocrisy. Oh. <laughs> it's that he claims to be a hero. Yeah. But he's actually a fraud and a murderer. Yeah, these guys are I mean, honest about now. who they are. Spider-Man hasn't really hurt anyone who's innocent. Right, he's only killed all. killers. I mean, that he did break Jameson's hand. He broke my hand, though. That's the difference, yeah, maybe, maybe to you, Jameson. <laughs> maybe I think it's more like Doc you know, Ock never broke my hand. No, he never. As far as I'm concerned, he's never even like done anything to me. <laughs> but uh, so, he's sold papers. Is what he's done. He's a good man. Yeah, he's good right. for business. <laughs> he's good for business. <laughs> So Jameson is like the sixth member of the Sinister Six. Okay. And, uh, he's gonna help them out. Now Jameson has had some old experience being a villain of Spider-Man's. He's worked with uh, Smythe in Spider Slayers. He has, he's had his own Spider Slayer. Right. It was like this big, silly, goofy robot that had a TV screen that Jameson controlled remotely that had his face on it that was like, I'm getting you, but I'm an old man, so I can't punch you, but this robot can kill you. Uh, and he's also created villains like the Human Fly and uh, 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 Scorpion. I want to see the version of that where he's learning to use the robot. He's like, oh shit. He just can't. Uh, damn it, son, you need, uh, uh, John, get in here Show me these me. controls again. I can't work one of these. Dad, Dad, it's just like a video game. Yeah, exactly, that's why I don't understand it and I hate it. But anyway, so uh, Jameson is now the sixth member of the Sinister Six. What the fuck are these purple guys? Those are minions of Doc Ock during Doc Ock's like, I'm the master plan. Doc Ock, there was a fun little like sub arc when like Stan ran out of ideas for Doc Ock. He <laughs> invented this like clandestine uh, master planner. And then the reveal was it's Doc it's Ock because he's smart. So he's also like, he's like, fuck being an, a, 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 a in public supervillain. How about I just like, plan shit and send other people to their doom. Right. So these are minions of Doc Ock. Okay. I am the master planner. That's it, that's it, right. yeah. My costume is a calendar. No, the, the, the costume is I'm Doc Ock and I'm just not in the room when those things happen. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, what, it, what's important is that Zdarsky needed minions that were wearing masks so that one of the minions could actually right. be not Spider-Man. Oh. It could be Eddie Brock. What? Why? Is he still a reporter? He's still a reporter. Eddie Brock oh. was a reporter, but his life was destroyed when Spider-Man outed his, uh, you know, his his fraud. Oh, see, this is, I was hoping it was like, no, Jameson's joining the Sinister Six yeah. and he brought Eddie in. Yeah, no. As like, no. you know, a, a, a guy on the inside. Yeah, no, Brock is an independent agent that is like, I need revenge on Spider-Man too. So he kills Doc Ock. And I need to make rent. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so he kills Doc Ock and he rips his arms out and he like creates a harness for himself so that he can personally deliver the killing blow on Spider-Man, <laughs> the man who ruined his life. Does that's he... a bit of a stretch, but... but... But then we could call him Brock Ock. <laughs> <laughs> does he get the harness? Yeah. Like the arm harness? Yeah. Or does he have to like crawl inside Doc Ock's body? <laughs> no, it's not and, that like, gross. And like wear him like a suit. Now he, he just... He just Gets, he just gets the, the, the arms. <laughs> he just gets the, And he yeah. just attaches them to it. I mean, the arms are attached to a thing, right? So yeah, he just probably they're, rips that off. Sometimes they're fused, and sometimes they're just a harness that he wears. Because, of course, like, the police wouldn't let him keep them attached to his body. So, like, when he gets them removed, he'll get, like, a harness okay. that you can just take off. And anybody can wear that. Right. So, Brock wears it. And so, the, uh, the team meets... At their like location to lure Spider-Man. I'm still upset with you for Brock. Ock. Brock, Ock, they, yeah. they call him that in the book. That's awesome. <sighs> That's not me, man. <laughs> That's Chip. Blame Chip. Hey, that Damn it, Chip. That weren't me. <laughs> so Brock Ock shows up and he's like, "Hey," and Jameson's like, "Uh, uh who the fuck are you?" <laughs> basically that because everyone would go, "Well, didn't he work for the Daily Bugle?" No, he worked for the Daily Globe. It was a rival newspaper. Now Jameson is informed. Right, he knows. So he's like, "Holy shit, you're that disgraced newsman that botched that Sin Eater story." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, Spider-Man fucked up. He's like, more like you fucked up your life and you just want to ride this coattails. Brock should just be like, and you're the disgraced news uh, owner. Man. Yeah, with one hand. With one yeah, hand. With one fucking hand. <laughs> and uh, I got fucking extra arms. Yeah. So 
But it's great because Jameson immediately has, he has no patience for Brock's bullshit. Right. It's like, no, you're full of shit. And he's like, no, you're full of shit. And he's like, okay, listen. All right. Let's, let's uh, hang on. We're, we're losing focus here. We're, we're all going to kill Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Beetle gave up the location of the Sinister Six okay. to Spider-Man. And Spider-Man, of course, murdered him in kind. So Spider-Man takes the car and he goes to, to confront them. Okay. At this, like, at this like, farm upstate. You know. Okay. Uh, you know, Reed calls Cap. He's like, "We're gonna have to have a big superhero fight at the end of this book." And he's like, <laughs> "Okay, you got it. I'll be there." And so Spider-Man goes. And while he's there, he's like having this internal monologue about how he's like, "I murdered these people." Yeah. And the suit's like, "Yeah, we did. We, yeah, did. we did. But like for we the for Aunt May. Right. You know, we did it to like save people. We're saving. We're people. saving people. Yeah. You're gonna step on people to get to like the greater good. Yeah. Remember the chap- remember, remember that dream? Stepping on yeah, but I didn't get to save Aunt May. <laughs> the whole point of that oh. dream was to save Aunt May, yeah. and I didn't get to save her. Well, you're yeah. saving a million Aunt Mays. Right? You're saving other people's Aunt Mays. Listen, like Darth Vader went to the dark side for less. So, <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, they're they're all just kind of like milling around because they're like at a, you know, this plot of land. Yeah. Well, they're just waiting because they they told the beetle. Yes. Like to give to up the location. give up the location. Yeah. They didn't expect him to be murdered. Which I of don't know he why. Was. Yeah. Because right. Because when they're when they turn around, his body just is... Just send an email, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, Beetle's body is suspended by webs uh. in front of them. They're like, ah! It's like a horror movie. Yeah. They're like, oh no, there he is! <laughs> and fucking Mysterio, stick to the plan, chumps! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please tell me he actually yells that. He does. He says, remember the plan. Who has eyes on him? <laughs> He's in the trees! Because <laughs> they're all wearing their like 1960s supervillain costumes like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> just in the woods. Like, and it turns into the beginning of Aliens. Yeah, and he's, he's, uh-huh. there, he's coming out of the goddamn trees. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Like, uh, literally awesome. that. They're like, come on, do the thing. So Mysterio's like, okay. And he like he casts an illusion. Oh, he even says, stick to the plan on the next page. Yeah. He says, remember the plan. And then he says, stick to the plan. Right? So he, he casts this illusion to like, you know, disorient Spider-Man and like, you know, give... Trip him up a little bit, and Craven right. just runs in, just like Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> yes, yes. Craven absolutely really Leroy Jenkins, and because he's like, I've got to hunt him. Yes, I, I have his scent. Uh. <laughs> so uh, you know, he's he's going for it. Meanwhile, like Mysterio immediately is murdered by Spider-Man's like freaking oh. symbiotic tendrils. Oh boy. Uh, so the, the illusions are done, and Spider-Man just like makes quick work of everybody. Fucking. You know, he's like, I fought you all a dozen times, and now I murder people. So you're right. all over. And then Brock Ock shows up and he goes, You never fought me. Uh, who the fuck are this you? Is, that's that is correct. I've never fought whoever you are. Yeah, he goes, buddy, I don't even know who the fuck you are. <laughs> <laughs> just like he looks like your fucking discount Doc Ock to me. <laughs> you look like a fucking idiot. You don't even have a goddamn costume. <laughs> You're gonna take like a second to defeat. Yeah. Cool, Doc Ock on a diet. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's a Doc Ock who doesn't know how to use his arms. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I'm shaking. <laughs> so, oh, it's a know. Doc Ock who's not a genius. Right. Whap! <laughs> That's the end of you. <laughs> So, uh, you know, Electro attacks him, causes a fire, because yeah, they're on this, like, you know, they're this farm or whatever. Uh, the barn bursts open, and Jameson comes out in his Spider Slayer robot, and he's oh. like, and, he, and Spider Man's like, Jonah! Oh, man, it's you. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, man. <laughs> Joe's like, no, you're not gonna kill me! And, like, he, like, wraps him up in his, like, Smythian Spider Slayer arms. Oh. Shouldn't be piloted as well. He's only got one hand to work. That's true, that's true, yeah. So Spider-Man is held by Jameson and there's this fire, it's raging, fire's coming through and the suit is reacting to the fire. Right. And as the fire causes the suit to recede, Jameson on the view screen sees Peter's face. Craven's knocked across the, the farm and Jameson runs out of the barn. Well, Jameson's like exosuit or whatever. Right. Like, runs right. out with Peter's body there because like the suit has been burned off of him. And... Mm. Uh, so Jameson, Does that mean the suit is dead. No, no, the suit is very much not dead. It's just it, it, it jumped off of him. It like burned off of him and then let, and then moved. Oh, okay. So Jameson pulls Peter out of the fire. He puts him down. Craven's like, "Okie dokie. Well, uh, I'm not going to look gift horse in mouth." And then Jameson just like hits him in the head <laughs> with a big heavy object, and he goes, "Damn it, Parker." Why did it have to be you? Huh. So he picks him up and he puts him in his van. Oh. I need you. You're my best photographer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I needed pictures of this fight. How else am I going to get pictures of Spider-Man? <laughs> oh, no. So he James- puts it all together. He's like, I can't let them kill you. I'll never get another picture of Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Jameson has Peter in the passenger seat. He drives away from the country. Okay. And 
Oh God. Uh, yeah, the suit's on the back of the car. Like, yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. That's what it is. But, but Jameson- hey, At least it's not underneath. Yeah. yeah. Cape Fear! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's practically Cape Fear. Yeah. So uh, Jameson, Peter, like, are talking and he's just like, you know, we gotta get Brock to a hospital. Craven's knocked out. Like, cause Brock like was just beaten savagely by you. Right. Uh, but you know, he's just like, Peter explains that wasn't me. Like it was the suit, it was, but maybe it was me. I don't know. Right. And, P- and Jameson's like, no. Like it wasn't, it wasn't you. I know you're not. That. I know you're not that. Yeah, and I he's like, you. fuck. Like Jameson has this like moment where he's like, okay. I was wrong about Spider-Man I'm, the whole time. I'm, yeah. Well, uh, not even like I'm wrong about Spider-Man, but like, okay, well I guess I'm gonna give him a pass because Peter's a good boy. Right. Right. Shit. <laughs> well, at least the thing is dead. And Peter says, I don't think it is. Mm-hmm. So Jameson brings Peter to his apartment where Mary Jane and Black Cat are waiting. <laughs> Uh, and uh, awkward. Yeah, so yeah. Jameson's there, and he's like, ah! And Peter's like, I'm sorry, you guys. And like, while they're in the apartment, like trying to figure out what to do next, the cops arrive. Oh. Because Wilson Fisk set up a contingency that if he were murdered by Spider-Man, ah. all of the news would find out who Spider-Man was. Okay. So Spider-Man's identity is outed. And the cops are there to make their arrests. Okay. Well, at least they're not there to just shoot him. No, but we got this great team now. We got Peter Parker... Mary Jane, Black Hat, and J. Jonah Jameson, who are all on Team Spider-Man. The suit, however, did not go to Peter's apartment. It went to the Baxter building, and it went on to Reed Richards. Oh. And it used his superior intellect to to merge Reed Richards' unstable molecules with itself to replicate itself and make new unstable molecule fire-resistant symbiotes. Okay, wait. (laughs) <laughs> Hang on. No. Hold up. It can How just does make it copies? Take, yeah. How does it take over Reed immediately right. and subvert his will? It took him like a long time to subvert well, Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man will. is the best of us. Well, uh, maybe. I guess. Yeah. Because Reed is like inherently corruptible. Uh, well, Reed isn't. It's like it's all in the pursuit of science. It's like okie dokie. Okay. You, then you take the wheel. Oh, <laughs> I'll show oh, you your science you've guy, never but seen. I, I do want to see where if this I can goes. do this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll it, take back over right before you kill someone. Uh, yeah, that does not happen. <laughs> so, like, but the, the the symbiote has used Reed to make copies of itself and take over wow. as many of the Fantastic Four as it can. Now, I thought originally that it was like it knows that it's it, it knows it reproduces asexually and it just takes like the five symbiotes. So you're gonna get like Phage right. is fucking the thing and Carnage is Sue or something. Oh no. my God, that'd be hilarious. It, it's not that because those five symbiotes are stupid and also because they didn't know they were gonna do that. So instead, also fire is the whole thing. So right. instead he uses the unstable molecules mixed with its own composition to make also, they're not really like their own symbiotes. That, otherwise they'd be their own being. Right. As right. opposed to extensions of itself. So he controls them? It's more like they don't control, like they have no will of their own. So they're like they, stupid? They're stupid, they do what he wants. Okay. They do what it wants. Do they like, does it, he like talk out of them? So or are they? Yes, he does, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, if, it, if he talks out of them, they're just extensions. Yeah, they're just extensions, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's getting a little weird. It get, well, it's supposed to be four and then he got five. Okay. He always gets one more issue out of like whatever <laughs> miniseries he's doing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, that was the end of three. We're now into four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this was, this should have been the conclusion and then he gets one more. So okay. this is the last issue and it's just, I'm until gonna, it's not. Until yeah. it's not. And then it's like, nah, more. So, okay. Spider Man's like, I'm going to put on my regular Spider Man costume because okay. I'm not going out in my skivvies. Nope. And I got to fight the symbiote because it's my responsibility. What about all those cops outside? I'll just, I'll just give them the slip. Oh. And he does. Like, they just go through the roof. And okay. Everybody's on the roof, and Jameson's like, hold on a minute there, son. Like, ah, you've involved me in this, and now I've got to help you. He's like, Jameson, for the love of God, <laughs> just go home and wait for me. I'm sorry about your hand. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to drop you off someplace. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Everyone grab a limb. I'm going to web swing us out of here. Right? But then he sees the Baxter building's taken over. It's got, like, symbiote shit all over it. Oh, my God. And he's like, ah, shit. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, so, uh, that's a lot of symbiote. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, ah, this is all my fault. I fucked up. And she's like, you're gonna make it right. Like, your your defining attribute isn't your guilt, it's your ability to like, conquer over adversity. Right. It's to see the, the bad and to still do good regardless. Yeah, against all odds, yeah. you still prevail. You prevail. So she gives him like a kiss for good luck and like, sends and him on his way. slaps him on the ass. <laughs> Get out there, tiger. <laughs> so meanwhile, like, the Avengers are at the, are downstairs. A couple of the uh, Fantastic Four have escaped. Human Torch, Sue, their kids. Well, their kid, Franklin. Uh, right. Valeria was, oh, I think, God, stillborn Franklin at this point. It. But Franklin's a kid, yeah. and he's here. And uh, so the Avengers are there, and the X-Men show up, and they're all in their time-accurate costumes. 
Cool. Yeah, we got fun. the Silver Centurion yeah, on right here. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, there they are. Spider-Man shows up. He's like, hey, guys, my bad. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, I'm going to go in because it wants me. And Cap's like, you can't go in because it wants you. Yeah, it'll just take you over It'll again. take you over immediately. What the fuck is wrong with you? And Spider-Man Spider takes his mask off. He looks Steve Rogers in the face and he goes, you have my word. That thing will never take hold of me again. And Cap's like, I looked in his eyes. A good boy. Sounds good. Send him in. So, okay, why don't you have Johnny plan. burn him? Oh, I guess he already tried that. It didn't work. Yeah. Well, yeah, it wouldn't. It was, it's too strong. It's right. got the unstable it's molecules. Got the, yeah. Human Torch is, of course, understandably pissed at Peter. He's like, you should have just let us take the suit. Yeah. Now, like, my brother-in-law is taken over by a monster, and he's going to take over the city, and, like, people are going to die. Like, yeah. You're an asshole. And Ben is dead? No, or? Ben is not dead. Oh, okay. Ben is a symbiote. So, oh. Uh, Peter walks up to the building, and the building like opens for him. Like it's like it, it makes this horrid Ugh. slurk sound effect. Ugh. I love this it. Gaping like maw. Like come on in. Yeah. So he's like, okay, Gross. I gotta go. And Mary Jane's like, I can help. He's like, how? He doesn't say that, <laughs> but like I am. Yeah. And so he goes. To What's the he hole. gonna do? Yeah. I'm gonna go on a stealth mission. What's he gonna right. do with that super <laughs> hole? <laughs> I'm gonna throw your little like. Your little, your little noise making thingies, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip switches and knock over boxes. Okay. I'm Why don't you go do a stealth mission in the building, like five blocks of away? Game. Ugh. He walks in. He walks and in. And symbiote doesn't just immediately take him over. Yeah, no, no, because it like, wants to like talk. Or that would no, be hilarious if Cap was just like, I looked in his eyes. He can do it. Take ah! it over. Just. <laughs> okay. I should listen to my original <laughs> yeah, plan. Exactly. <laughs> it just murders him. <laughs> <laughs> just grabs, and twists his neck. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Like, yeah, I don't need you. I, I I got Mr. Fantastic. He can fucking stretch. He's way better. Yeah, what are you? You're strong? I'm strong. I'm already <laughs> strong. What, what do I need you yeah, for? Yeah, but it, like, it, it, it has a connection with him. I see. Like, it wants him. Uh, so Mary Jane jumps in after him. And he's like, Mary Jane, come on! And then Human Torch... He starts sneaking around. Yeah, Human Torch blasts through using his heat powers. Like, uh -huh. But, you know, because the hole was like a little short, smaller. So he goes yeah, through okay. too. So now it's Mary Jane, Human Torch, and Spider-Man. Oh, okay. okay. He's like, oh, I, I was hoping it wasn't like, he was able to blast through it was his fire, because it's still not fully fire resistant. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, he just squeaks through the hole before it closes up. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the symbiote has like controlled like the staff of the Baxter building. <laughs> like they're like running system analyses and stuff. Mary Jane just grabs one of the guns off of the, uh, of one of the dudes. She's like, okay, let's do this. What are you going to do with that gun? I am going shoot to shoot the symbiote. Is that for yourself yeah. when the thing gets hold of you? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's a good plan then. Yes. So yeah, This is my backup. So he like he goes, all right, I'm going to go. Uh, Johnny's going to help me and we're going to go. So Johnny like blasts through it helps him, carries him up there. So, you know, he's got to get to the top floor. He's got to get, yeah, that's where he is. He's hey, at the top. Hey, when Johnny is carrying him, is, oh, does he, Peter he get burned? No, he depowers the arm that he's grabbing people with. Okay. So, uh, cause, okay. and that's important because he will do that later to a person who can't, has no superpowers. So while they're going up the elevator shaft, uh, the thing who is now symbiote control just drops down the elevator shaft. Like, just, everyone's like a nice. marionette. Yeah, yeah, they're all being controlled. So the thing drops and... Yeah, there's a few tendrils so you can exactly, see. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's controlling him. But, but uh, Human Torch gets out of the way and Spider-Man's like, I don't have time to get out of the fucking way. And Thing just hits him and just oh. knocks him back down to the ground Ouch. floor and lands on him. So now Spider-Man's like just wrecked. <laughs> and he's at the ground floor. Yeah, and he fights Thing and Thing's just smashing him and Thing's talking as the symbiote to him being like... What, do you, what does it want from him? You know, it, it wants him to stop and it wants him to accept it. Right. You know, like just come we can, back. I'm we just going to punch you until you accept me. Yeah, because this is all part of the plan. Right. Like, I'm use, I made more of me so we can we can protect people and control Remember everybody. when right. we couldn't save Aunt May because of the fire? I fixed it. Yeah, now yeah. I don't have to worry about the fire. Yeah. Uh, and that would be interesting. No, it's not. But so... Uh, How strange would it be if he's only able to use the unstable molecules because he's controlling Reed Richards? Right. So essentially... The symbiote is wearing Reed Richards. Yeah, as and a suit. Reed Richards wears Peter Parker. Oh, jeez. No. <laughs> no, the unstable molecules are part of the costumes. Like, that's. Yeah. He's it not. Sucks functional. him out of the costume yeah. or whatever. No, he's, he's, he's just around Reed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I like that. So, <laughs> Spider Man fights the thing, and he's like, he is fight Like, the, the suit is using Thing to fight me with all the ferocity of the thing. Right. And I need to respond in kind. Like, and he's thinking like I could just kill him, and he's like, no, that's not, that's not, <laughs> no, like, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. Like I am, I'm better than that. And that so, was the answer to the last six of my problems. Right. I am not doing that well, again. Well, it's not there. You know, it's not here anymore. Like I have control. I'm going to choose not to do that, but I can 
beat the living shit out of him because yeah, because he's the thing. He can take it. He's made of rocks. Yeah. So I'm gonna punch as hard as so I can. So he beats the hell out of him, and then he goes like, you know, and, and the, the suit's just like, you know, you're not. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you, and he's like, okay, well, then I'll make you somebody else's problem, and he mm-hmm. knocks him out the window, onto the street. So now the Avengers and the X Men can fight yeah. the thing. <laughs> He's like, there. Okay, that's one down. Not really, though. <laughs> Go ahead. Split your consciousness and your attention with different things. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Torch goes to meet with Reed because he's like, I could just burn it off of him. Right. Because they don't know about the unstable mind. Right, right. Also, uh, the suit made Reed help him make like a containment suit. So like <laughs> the suit is on Reed and is wearing a like protective suit that will keep him from being burned by Johnny. And he's looking all crazy Slenderman-y. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, because it's the suit using Reed, and it's like stretched out. You know, yeah. It's ugh. like, oh, I might as well look creepy. Why not? I'm the yeah. villain of the book. Yeah. Hey, it's a great intimidation tactic. Yeah. Gross. Right? Okay. It scares the hell out of you. The symbiote sets off its like symbiote bomb and like blasts its itself, <laughs> its unstable molecule version of itself out. Ew, oh. it spewed on everyone. Yeah, That's and it good. lands on everybody outside. So now the Avengers and the X-Men oh. are symbiotes. Oh, yeah, Oh, they so, are. like, it touches you, you're immediately taken over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it jumps on you and it takes over. It's like a souped-up super version of the symbiote. Yes, so it's exactly. It's like, no, I got you. That, no, I got you. While it's monologuing at the Human Torch about its success, Mary Jane shoots it in the back. Oh. And uh, that gets its attention. Oh. So then Chip ran out of pages, so we got to do another issue. Right. <laughs> All right, we gotta finish the fight. But it's but I appreciate it because like it's not over and this allows it to have a conclusion as opposed to it right. just stopping. Right. Like right. so that so then uh Spider Man dies and the book goes over. Right. Because there's Lame. so many what ifs where and then Spider Man dies and the heroes go, Man, Spider Man was a very popular character. Which is so I guess unsatisfying. We'll miss him. Yeah, I right. guess we'll miss him. <laughs> <laughs> While Human Torch is engaging with the symbiote Reed, Peter is in the lab and he's like trying to figure out, he's like, I gotta use my fucking brain. Cause like mm. it's, you know, it, it's, it's using, using Reed's brain. It's using Reed's yeah. brain. So he's using like, Reed's big brain. You know what would be mm-hmm. really nice? Is if right before this fight, Peter got like a full days of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he so is, like his brain is actually functioning. No, it's not. He's like, I am at like, like no, I got no gas in the tank. And I've got to like, just, just summon the will and the courage to, to figure this shit out. Uh, so you know the suit is going to attack Mary Jane. Uh, they're they're using like the the Avengers Bluetooth by the way to talk to each other. Oh nice. So you know, Peter's like get her the fuck out of there. So Human Torch like depowers his arm, grabs Mary Jane, and he blasts out of there because of course the suit hates Mary Jane. Right. Because the suit knows because the suit it says to Mary Jane while they're like talking. You know, the suit's like oh it's you. Oh the other thing it wanted. He, <laughs> he loves you. And she's like really. Oh, I didn't know. I thought he like, you know, I thought he liked me, but I yeah, thought he was in love with me. And she, <laughs> yeah, and, she, and it's like, no! <laughs> so it's like, I need to get rid of you. And he right. got black guys on here. Oh, and it's also you. Yeah. He wants to bang you. And, and he wants, Jane's like, God damn it. And he wants both of you <laughs> in one thing. <laughs> I've seen his dreams. I know, I know, I know. what he's after. Yeah, so. <laughs> like, thanks. Yeah, so now the suit is like, I got to get rid Once I kill you, then he'll have nobody else, and right. he'll have to come back to, to me. Be. That's how. So, that's how. That that's how works, love works. Right? I'm yeah. a fucking alien. I don't know how this relationship works. That's why, uh, so, that's why the venom to be. It's so messed up. Yeah. For being an alien who doesn't know how relationships works, it sure sounds like a lot like an extra friend. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, like that's the thing. Is that's why it's so relatable. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so so Johnny grabs Mary Jane, just flies out of there, and it's like, okay, I'm gonna send the might of the X Men and Avengers after you to kill Mary Jane. Right. Because now that's my goal. That's my goal. To is to kill her. Get her out of there. Right. Meanwhile, Spider-Man has, uh, he's going through like all this shit in the backstory, like he's looking at stuff and he finds like, he finds all this random stuff. He's like, oh, and he finds this like neat little like device. I don't remember if he actually identifies what it is. I don't want to give it away right now because there's a fun like twist, Mm. but he has this thing that is like a classic Fantastic Four device. And he's like, ah. So there's like a chase going on through Manhattan. All the Avengers, like the Avengers and the X-Men are chasing after the Human Torch and Mary Jane. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Sue has not been taken over. Okay. Because she had the invisible force field. Okay. So she goes to help Johnny. So then Sue and Mary Jane and Human Torch and Peter and everybody, like all the Avengers, like they go to the roof of the Baxter building. The symbiote Reed is there. And he's like, I rejected you, but I'm here and I'm ready for you to take me. Right. And You have to let Mary Jane live. Yes. And, and of course I'll it does. And it, like, well, it lets her go. And it's like, <laughs> it, it like lifts up the suit thing, like the protector. And it goes, 
I, I will go on to you, but I can't risk letting Reed go because Reed will stop me. Oh. So it creates like daggers with itself and stabs Reed through the chest oh, and murders shit. Reed Richards. Oh, damn. While he's wearing it. Right. Like it jumps off him and then and then just dies, dies through into him. Reed, Ugh. killing Reed. Oh. Peter immediately bails and like jumps further into the into the lab. The suit chases after him and then it grabs onto him and starts to go onto him. Mm -hmm. And as it starts to go onto him, Peter's eyes begin to glow and the human torch is revealed to be Peter Parker because Peter found Reed Richards' imaging shifter that he would give to the thing to appear human when he could walk around town. I, I thought the human torch was carrying Mary Jane. Yeah, and then they came back and they switched places. Oh, in yeah, between Yeah, in the fracas on the Yeah, roof. in the fracas on the roof. There's a yeah. lot of characters walking around. Yeah. Okay. Plus, they had the Bluetooth thing, so Peter could tell them the plan. Right. That's much better than my explanation of, like, Peter ate a really spicy pepper. Yes. It's like, <laughs> I had jalapenos! <laughs> oh, man. So when friggin' when the suit killed Reed Richards... Yeah. Like, Johnny. Was like Johnny, like, watching him kill Reed yeah, Richards. Yeah, so that's oh. why, like, so Peter like, had oh. such a reaction. Yeah. Johnny, oh, my sister's gonna be pissed. Yeah. yeah. So when Oof. the when the suit let Mary Jane go, like Peter secretly like grabbed her and took her away. So okay. Johnny ignites his Nova flame and just torches the suit. Nice. And Peter and Mary Jane are like watching from like an alley, mm -hmm. sticking to the wall, like just looking at it, being like, "Nice job, Johnny." So the unstable molecules protected it from fire only while it was on Reed Richards. Well, while it was on the other guys. The like the other like the minions. Yeah, the yeah. So the minions. It wore like a suit. Yeah. Like, so it had a suit to protect it, but like its its extensions were mixed with unstable molecules. Like he made little like okay. little mini yeah. symbiotes or so, sim like, symbiotes. Suit prime or symbiote prime. Yes. Is not the venom symbiote. Not flame. It is not. Stuff. It is it's not just flame what retardant. it originally was. Exactly. Yeah. So what happened to the minions? Were they like controlled oh, they, like, by oh, it? They, they, they droid army. You know. Okay. Right. Oh, they turn off. Right. Yeah. Cool. It has no That's central what I assumed brain. would happen. Yeah. yeah, it turns into mindless <laughs> goop. They yeah. droid army. But uh, Invisible Girl saves everybody else from being burned to death, and then the Fantastic Four like reunite and like overreads dead. Uh, Fantastic Three. Yeah, the terrific three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Reed's dead, and the symbiote is no more, and Peter's free, and you know. So that's okay. how it kind of wraps up. And then it's like it ends with uh, Brock in the hospital and J. Jonah Jameson visiting with Brock and being like. You remind me of me because, like, you deflect your own, like, mistakes onto you're, somebody else. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. Like, you I remind am. me of me. And you're a newspaper man. Right. So, yeah. it's not that's that. Basically it's just me. like, I, you're my pet project. Like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to fix you. Right. Like, if I can learn. Welcome to be, home, yeah, son. <laughs> if I can be redeemed, so can you. Right. So, okay. uh, you know, J. John James, like, takes Brock. And Brock's like, sure. <laughs> yeah. It's more like if you're strong enough and brave enough to like admit when you're wrong and to admit when you've like you know been you know selfish. Right. You know, maybe there's help for you. So. Right. And, and the Brock doesn't really turn like, around and be no, like you're, you're going to jail. <laughs> Spider-Man proved you right. Right. He right. was Except no, it's the murderer. Suit. He it's, was terrible. But the suit really did it. But like so Peter gives himself up and there's a trial. And, oh. And there are a ton of character witnesses including Captain America who are like I was controlled by a symbiote and it was impossible to resist and so right. I totally buy that Peter did not murder those people the suit did mm. so he serves some time and then is acquitted and he, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he goes free okay so then for like the first time in his life he gets to take a shower take a nap shave and he goes to Aunt May's grave and he's just like huh and he's with Mary Jane and they're like, together. Oh, that's and up. she jumps up. out of the, the grave because she had a two symbiote? months worth of hair or something. <laughs> no. Wow. Good pull from that Marvel Lights Spider-Man story. But uh, I never actually died. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so there, you know, he's like, I can't, I, I, I've taken so much and I've done all this stuff. And she's like, we'll figure it out. Like, we'll move on. Yeah. And then uh, he turns around and Sue Storm is there. Oh. And she's like wearing this fun, really cool Fantastic Four jacket that I wish existed. <laughs> and she's like, I need a minute with Peter. Oh. So Mary Jane like like leaves them alone. And this is where I'm like, and this is where Sue puts a bubble over Peter's head and murders him. <laughs> because it's gotta be a what if. Right. That'd be amazing. I, I don't No, he has you. to die at the end. Yeah. Like, I don't forgive you. Yep. You took my father, yeah. my child's father yeah. away. I don't forgive you. Uh, I don't care what the courts say. I wasn't even in, on the same block right. when that happened. I was over there yeah. with Mary Jane. That was all the suit. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, and it was still your plan. Yeah, and it was your fault. Yeah, it was my plan. I That's put true. an air bubble in your brain and you died. You had, it looks You're like an aneurysm. Aneur aneur You've died. I killed you 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, you should have given up the suit originally. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I blame you for and that. That's right. Happened. I don't care about the, on yeah. top of the roof. Yeah, I don't care about, yeah. gro about, about, about growth or whatever. You're yeah. a piece of shit and I've murdered you. Yeah. That's what a lesser writer would probably do. But in this, instead, <laughs> she's like, she's like, you need to, because he's like, I'm done being Spider-Man. Like, it's over. Right. And yeah, she's well, like, the Spider-Man brand is ruined anyway. It's kind of ruined. But uh, I she, wouldn't necessarily say that. He was very effective. Yeah, he was but she effective. Basically, she says something He's got about the wrong like wrong kind of fans now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, she basically says to him like, "I believe in second chances, and like, there's there's a there's a place for you." And so she hands him a Fantastic Four emblem, like this kind of like thing. Oh. And then it ends with Spider-Man maskless in a Fantastic Four outfit, being the fourth member of the Fantastic Four. Oh. So it looks like Reed with no gray in the temples. Yeah. Yeah. But he's got spider powers. Yeah, it looks like Mary Jane's got some competition now. <laughs> yeah. She's like, go on, the talk Richards to me like Reed uh... would. Do some science. Oh, no. Oh. No, I think, I assume Mary Jane and Peter stay together and ah. like Sue, you know, meets other people. Maybe she hooks up with Namor finally. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh my God, you're right. Namor, leave. <laughs> immediately into the ocean. This dude just wears a Speedo all the time. He's cut. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's got uh, cum gutters. <laughs> God damn it. So then there's the epilogue, where it turns out that Fisk didn't die. And they recovered a symbiote from the aftermath, and they're gonna make Fisk into like, carnage pin or something. Like, like, uh, like King, bulk venom. King carnage, King Parnage, it sucks. Uh, where did they get it from? Whatever. From like the lab, from the wreckage. From the Baxter building? You know, like it was a- you know, He was a, got a symbiote from inside he the has, Fantastic he's, Four he's headquarters. He's got people all over the place. Plus, as you can see, like his entire mouth was caved in. Like he has just- Yeah, he's got a fucking Sub-Zero fucking mask on Yeah, because it's, it's, just, it's just a gaping maw of flesh or whatever under there. It's just, ugh, like just imagining what's under there. But uh, now he's got, he's got the symbiote. He so shouldn't like, even be able to talk. So he'll look really dope. Like, he'll have like a mouth that goes from here to here. You know, it'll be like, rah. I it'll bet he be won't, tummy. I bet yeah. there won't be anymore. There's no fucking way there's gonna be a sequel to this. <laughs> but it was very, it was it was successful, it was right. po It was popular. People really dug it. It is a cool story. Are I you kidding love me? it up until the epilogue. Well, yeah, you could just pretend it, that that's not there. Uh, Kingpin, I do. If Kingpin did make it. Right. And became right. Venom. Yeah, I still Carnage. wanna read that book. Yeah? Yeah. You wanna read that? Yeah, okay. Okay. I don't want There's one. Let's see There's it. one person that's who would one. read it. All right. Would you buy it though? Well, no. I want okay. Sal to explain it yeah, to me on the couch. It. You gotta buy it, which by the way, there is a link for this in the description below this video. Pick it up, it's worth the price of admission. Pascal Ferry's art is fun. Uh, you know, the coloring is hit or miss sometimes. It kind of yeah, like, yeah. it gets a little muddled, but they're, they're going for a style and I think they achieve it and it's a really cool book that has some really fun visuals and it's, it's treated with the depth and, and, and attention to detail and you know severity of a regular comic book series, right. even though it's a what if. It's like one of the most prestigious yeah. what ifs ever made. Yeah, it it's, looks like it's really well done. Like it's, it like, a, it's like a normal comic. Comic, what if? yeah. Like, we covered the best what if ever. Yeah. Like mini series outside of continuity. Yeah, totally. That someone cared about. Right. And it also happens to be what if. And it also happens to be what cool. if. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm like, way to go. You nailed yeah. it. After the first issue, I was like, neat. What a fun way to explore this story. Yeah, yeah. right? Hey. So I I'd mean, like to see more of this, hopefully. It'd be cool to see them like do the 90s or something. Yeah, man. I. It's really funny because when we were prepping for GBU. Yes, with the what ifs we were doing. I, I, I had this thought that I'm like, what the fuck? Are they doing yeah. with these what if stories? It's like the exact opposite of what it should be, yes. which is like I want to do this a gigantic idea yep. of this like I'm going to change one thing and then and it see what this happens. Massive epic. Yeah. Like oh, see what happened for like over the course of years in one issue. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. Like you told that story, the real story, yeah. over hundreds of issues. Yes. Why would doing it in one make any sense? Nope. And and so Be, much of the real estate is, is spent to setting to up a, the, the, yeah. the status quo. Yeah, well that's, well, that's the thing. The thing. Like, just, we're just testing the water with this artist. But I got you like, two dollars. It comes off got like you, cheap. It's like yeah. a cheap story that's because right. you're just hitting like bullet points. You know, totally. you don't really get any depth. Oh, no, I already this wrote this. Yeah, I barely have to write anymore. I'm just gonna change a little bit, that's and I it. still get more money. Yeah, well, and it was an ongoing series that came out a lot. Like it, 
you know, yeah. there were there were hundreds of issues of what if over yeah. multiple volumes. Yeah, yeah this and is better. Each oh, one yeah. seems like a cash grab, and yeah. this seems like an actual creative idea. Yes, so. and what's ironic is that this probably made more money than any issue of what if hitherto. Yeah, yeah. It's the best what if, so yeah. check it out if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, and and of course it, it creates a. It's funny because like. I don't know why, but there's like a huge subset of Spider-Man fans that are like, dude, I love Spider-Man. I just wish he would fucking kill everybody. And it's like, that's not Spider-Man. Like, Peter Parker would be ashamed <laughs> If you want to read that, here you go. Right, but no, right. but it's not, because at the end of the day, he like joins the Fantastic Four, yeah, and he's like, like that wasn't me. That wasn't me, I'm a good guy. And yeah. it's like, damn it. And so you know there's people who are like, I love this, except for the end. Except for how it's revealed that like, he wasn't in control. Right, and... like that's so lame. Well, don't you want your cake what? and eat it too? Yeah, here it is. He kills people, and it's not his fault. There you go. Yeah. No, I, I, I want it to be his fault. No, I want him to want to I kill people. I want him to people. want to kill people like I do. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> and if he's uh, not going to kill people... There's a telephone number for you to call <laughs> in the back yes. of this book. It's 911. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no. And if he's not going to kill people, then at least have, have Sue kill him. Right. Have her... Someone's got to cross a line. So, see you guys next week. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. These people are also Superman fans. They love their, 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 their favorite image of Superman is when he's got glowing red yep. eyes. Oh shit, he's gonna fucking murder someone. Yeah, like Superman always would. Thank you. Yeah.